All right, match one with Demir Teachings. We get to be on the play. We have Radiant Fountain, play Aqueduct turn two, and not have to discard a hand size since we're on the play. We have one removal spell, card draw, counter spell. This is good enough. Our opponent will immediately know what's up because of the Radiant Fountain, most likely. And we're playing against Delver, okay? It's a deck that's often a little bit too fast for us, but we are definitely going to do our best. Bone Splitter. And they're getting aggressive. Well, that's probably the least bad thing they could have done for us. They're not holding up Counter Magic. They didn't get to play a Ninja and start drawing cards. So I would love to hold up a Counter Spell here. But I think I'm going to take this opportunity to get rid of the fairy. The fact that they played and equipped a bone splitter indicates that they probably don't have anything better to do at the moment. So I'm going to agony warp this away and play a tap land. And I think that uses our mana best. Preordain. Top and bottom. And they pass the turn. All right. Now this is exactly where we want to be. There's no creatures on the board that we have to worry about. We have a counter spell up, and our opponent has to make the first move. Delver of Secrets. Well, I don't have any kill spells in hand, so I am going to attempt to counter this. If our opponent can counter back, that's fine. It's nice that they can't spell but it's nice that they can't spell stutter sprite us right now. Okay, they decide to deprive, picking up a land. Now their Delver resolves, they play their island. And they have another Miscreant, so it's a good thing we killed the first one. All right, now we have to Compulsive, try to find some kill spells. We will discard a land here. And I believe we can get rid of this island, play a Fountain, and to play it safe, I'm going to kill Delver now, I believe. If I try to Doomblade on our opponent's turn, they're going to get to Spellstarter Sprite us. Or I could wait on Doomblade until after our opponent takes their whole turn. Yeah, that's probably a little bit safer. We can take some damage. So I'm going to untap. I'm going to let our opponent do what they will, and then I'm going to untap on my turn and Doomblade with Counter Spell Protection. No Blind Flip of Delver is great for us. Brainstorm. All right, Bone Splitter is being equipped. And I'm just going to take this damage. I don't want to get Spell Starter Sprited. Pass. Ooh, Evan Card's Justice was a great draw here. Unfortunately, because we discarded Island and we didn't know that we were drawing this, we can't Justice with Counterspell back up right now. So let's start by trying to Doomblade this Fairy Miscreant to take down their Fairy Count. And there's the Counterspell. And we will Counter back. Save ourselves some damage, pass the turn. And our opponent gets free reign for one turn, and then we get to Evancar's Justice. So the only really bad thing for us would be a Spire Golem, but then we can get rid of that with Devour Flesh. They reveal and play a Preordain, putting both cards on bottom. And have a third Fairy Miscreant. All right, we're going to wait till our opponent attacks here, probably. Let them draw one more card. And then we'll start interacting. So I'm going to lead off with Devour Flesh. And then possibly murder in response, depending on what our opponent does. If they try to spell Stutter Sprite, that would be the best for us. Because that would mean we could murder one of the fairies in response to make our Devour Flesh resolve. We get to take down the Delver. We're taking one from this fairy miscreant. Ninja is going to come in.
and they pass the turn. So I don't want to lose my Evancar's Justice here by not buying it back. So I think I'm going to try to mind games our opponent. Fairy Miscreant's coming back down. Oh, and I clicked that too late. Okay, well, it looks like we're letting them draw another card. I should not have said okay to the fairy before I made my stop, that's for sure. I suppose if they hadn't have cast something main phase, I wouldn't have even had a chance, so. Bone Splitter equip. All right. Here we're going to tap down a land to take them off of Counterspell and Spell Stutter Sprite. Force them to do that now if they want to. And perfect, they give us a Spell Stutter Sprite. So now we just need to untap land to win the game. Okay, well, we're not going to just win the game because we can't buy back the Seven Cards Justice. However, just casting is going to be really good for us too. It would be nice if we had another mana open. We could exclude a Spire Golem, but unfortunately that is going to resolve and be a fairly quick clock. But we drew removal. Perfect. And now we're miles ahead, hopefully. Hardcast Ninja. We'll exclude it. We will cycle this. Although this does let us flash back our Chainer's Edict. So I suppose we'll play it. Well, we drew a, a Swamp, so we can cycle this Lonely Sandbar after all. Prohibit. And now we're just going to wait a while. We don't have to Crypt Incursion anytime soon. There are currently one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight creatures, so we can gain 24 life off of this. We're just going to wait till we draw a Mystical Teachings or a couple of Cumulative Knowledge like we just did, and then we're going to get ahead. All right. Try to exclude a Delver. That works. And there's the Mystical Teachings. Wonderful. So now we just have to set up a win condition. Either a Curse of the Bloody Tome once we find it, or a uh, lock with Evancar's Justice and Pristine Talismans. I think we can wait on the accumulated knowledge here. I'm just going to grab a counter spell for safety. Drew another Mystical. Here I'm going to try to draw some cards two to be exact. All right, there's our last Evancar's Justice. And let's go ahead and fire this off. We're not going to need any more life than what we have here now. And I don't want to have to discard a hand size if I don't draw away the next turn. All right, our opponent's going to try to deprive. We're going to counter that. They're going to counter spell back. We're going to prohibit back, and if they counter this, then their hand is basically empty anyway. And we don't actually need the life from the Crypt Incursion. It's very nice, but we don't need it. We can always gain life with Pristine Talismans. All right, pick up a Fountain so we can reuse it. Proto goes bottom top with Preordain, plays a Delver. Pop out our graveyard. And let's go find a capsize. That sounds fun. Tragic slip this Delver. And our opponent concedes. So at this point, the capsize allows us to throw away two lands a turn from our opponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So once we find our 12th land, we capsize twice. We take our opponent entirely off lands. And then we just don't draw anymore. We don't cast any more accumulated knowledge and outdraw ourselves because we don't want to deck ourselves. And we have 25 turns to throw away all our lands back into their hand with capsize or force them to interact and try to counter it. And then we find Curse of the Bloody Tome or 
Pristine Talisman to combo with Evan Carr's Justice and just keep buying it back to win the game. So against Delver, I'm going to bring in a Dispel, a Justice, and an Unmake. Unmake is for the Stormbound Geist. I'm going to take it out of Capsize because they often have ways to return their own creatures to their hand, so Capsize can be a little bit worse against them. Mind Games, same reason. And Compulsive Research, just because I don't have the time to cast it. Stormbound Geist could also be a good card against them sometimes, but there's no other cards that I want to take out to be able to do that. And we'll submit this. Alright, we have a turn 1 Tragic Slip, which is very good for us, because then whatever creature they play turn 1, we get to kill before they have Counter Magic available. So we are definitely going to take that opportunity. One way you can lose is to an early Delver just flipping out of nowhere and then them having counter magic for two or three turns in a row. No Shuffle, followed by a Fairy Miscreant. And I'm going to use the exact same logic that I did before and get this off the table before they untap. They shuffle this time, and they pass the turn. They tap out for a Stormbound Geist. We will draw a card and look for our Unmake. So I'm going to play a land here, untapped, so that I can either play Decay and Doomblade or Mystical Teachings. I'm going to give my opponent a free counter spell target here. Even if they have four spike, this will be able to it'll be able to take down our teachings. And if they don't, I get to go get an unmake. That's going to be the card I select. Another accumulated knowledge. So I'm going to main phase, attempt to resolve this, and hit an untapped land for unmake. Alright, I did not. I'll play the aqueduct here. Anytime you can play the Aqueduct and not have to discard a hand size, it's generally a good idea to pick up an untapped land so that you'll have an untapped land drop to make on a future turn. Our opponent ponders yet again. They choose to shuffle. Here I can play a tap land and I can pass. I'm going to take two more damage from the Stormbound Geist, and then I'm going to unmake it with Counterspell Backup. I could have done this on my turn, but I think it's safer this way. Alright, at this point, while that's in the air, I'm going to attempt to resolve this unmake. And the reason I'm going to do it now is so there's less fairies on the battlefield for spells that are Sprite, potentially countering my Counterspell or Prohibit. There's a Dispel. Alright. I'm going to attempt to... Prohibit the Dispel. And our opponent deprives the Prohibit. So their hand is mostly empty now. And we can Evan Carr's Justice with Buyback. We're going to take a little bit of damage to do this, but I like getting the two for one here. They got rid of our only way to exile Stormbound Guys, so we are going to have to two for one ourselves to get off the battlefield. So this helps get a little bit of card advantage back. Next turn, we're pretty safe to be able to get this off the battlefield since we have Doomblade and Echoing Decay. One cool trick that they can do here is return their Stormbound Guys with the Ninja to reset it and it'll have us remove it twice again. So Ninja would be bad for us here. But if they don't have Counterspell to back that up, then I just get to buy back Evan Carr's Justice again to kill the Ninja. Alright, I'm going to pass the turn, make our opponent interact on their turn, and use their counter magic then if they want to try to fight this. I can also two for one myself with Echoing Decay and Disfigure to get rid of this if I want to, but I do not. Alright, there's a Deprive. That's going to be countered. So now I have the option before our opponent plays a land drop of doing Echoing Decay and Disfigure just to get rid of the Geist. Or taking another 3 damage from it. 
I have a Chainer's Edict in Yard, so I think I'm going to do that instead of 2 for 1 myself and take another 3 here. It's a little dangerous with Evancar's Justice. If I take too much damage, it's not very useful, but... Our opponent has had a great hand so far. That's fine, because our hand has been pretty good, too. The beauty of this is that it does not get hit by Dispel, so they have to have exactly 4 Spike in hand. All right. Geist goes away. Una's Grace, okay. So they have a card advantage engine now. They can turn all their lands into fresh draws. We do not have a way to exile Una's Grace, unfortunately. Play a land and pass. Look at our graveyard. We have a Mystical Teachings, one accumulated knowledge so far. So we're going to let this resolve. Draw two with our accumulated knowledge. Attempt to flash back our teachings. Okay, if this gets countered. I can either grab counter spell here or I can grab a uh, capsize. Although actually I boarded out capsize, didn't I? How many creatures for Crypt Incursion? Four. I think I can get Crypt Incursion later. I'm gonna get counter spell for now. I think it's safer. All right, nine cards in hand. We are gonna have to discard a hand size here. We'll play this. So one of the cool plays you can make with this deck is you can use Crypt Incursion to get rid of a Stormbound Geist with the Undying trigger on the stack. But I still didn't want to go get it just yet. I'd rather have a generic counter spell in addition to this dispel and exclude. I think that's worth having to discard a hand size here. And our opponent's going to retrace. I don't care about them drawing a generic card, so I'm not going to dispel, even though this means I still have to discard. Delver of Secrets. Gush, okay. I'm going to let that resolve. Anytime our opponent wants to draw cards, I'm going to let them, because I'm planning on winning with Curse of the Bloody Tomb. They gush twice and are now pondering. They did not shuffle with their ponder. I'm going to let this resolve since I have so many ways to kill it. Relic of Progenitus. I don't want to have to deal with that. And we win the match. So our opponent knew we had the Evancar's Justice, we could just keep buying back. Eventually we would find our pristine talisman and be able to win with that, or we could win with the Curse of the Bloody Tome. Alright, so we put up our first win, and we are on to match two.